In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between a sole proprietorship, LLC, and a corporation from both a legal and tax perspective. My name is Navi Miraj. I'm a certified public accountant, and we've got a lot to cover. So let's get into the video. All right, so no matter where you're watching this um, video, whether it's on your various social media platforms, you can always find this video on my website, which is navimiragecpa.com. A quick disclaimer before we get into the details, I am not an attorney, however, I am a certified public accountant. So I can speak to the tax implications of setting up these various uh, legal entities, but um, I have consulted with attorneys across the nation, and I'm pretty sure they would agree with most of the things that I might touch on from a legal perspective, but you would want to consult with your business attorney to uh, see if they agree with what I'm saying here. Um, so as I mentioned, when you form a business, you are actually making two decisions. You are making a legal decision and a tax decision. So let me kind of lay the foundation for this video, and that will kind of make a little bit more sense. So when you form um, a, uh, a business, you are going to be treated as the ways up above here from a legal perspective. And then down here are the different ways you could be treated from a tax perspective. All right. So up here, I have the different legal entity types and down below the different tax types. Um, let's talk about the colors for a second. The green is going to indicate how this particular entity is tax by default. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, there's no box that says, hey, check here to be treated this way, this way from a tax perspective. Um, the blue represents how that entity type could be treated from a tax perspective. And I'll get into those details here in a second. Now, there are some less common structures that I didn't put on here. And you could also have an LLC treated um, as a C Corp. Um, but that's not very common, and this video is for your average small business owner. So let's get into the details. So the sole proprietorship. You can form a sole proprietorship by simply walking into your bank, and if your name is John Doe, for example, you could talk to your banker and he or she will open up an account called John Doe's Landscaping, if you're an, if a landscaper. Um, and you could just go out and start mowing people's lawns if you want. Um, now, I don't necessarily recommend that because that the sole proprietorship doesn't have what's called limited liability protection. So if someone sues your, you know, John Doe's landscaping, um, your individual assets as John Doe, the individual, are also now at risk, okay? Um, so how is this entity treated, the sole proprietorship treated from a tax perspective? Well, it's treated as a sole proprietorship. But what I mean by that is you are going to complete, you or your tax professional is going to complete a Schedule C and attach it to your Form 1040 individual tax return. What I want to um, help you understand is that there's no separate uh, set of tax documents that you're completing or having your accountant complete when you form a sole proprietorship. It's an additional schedule called Schedule C that's attached to your individual tax return. Now, let's for a brief moment talk about these entity structures on the um, right-hand side. So I mentioned that the sole proprietorship does not provide limited liability protection. These entity types may, and I say may because you want to treat them as though they're separate entities. So you don't want to commingle funds between your business and personal. You want to use your uh, entity name on all your marketing documents. You might, if you're an LLC, have um, a articles of organization, of course, but also an operating agreement. Maybe you have a board of advisors. Um, you take meeting minutes when you have uh, business discussions, even if it's by yourself. I know that sounds a little silly, but yes, you want to record meeting minutes and all those things will help you, you know, prop up and support that. Yes, your LLC is actually different than you as an individual. Um, but let's kind of break these down one by one. So here I have SMLEC, LLC rather, or SMPLLC. This means the SM stands for single member. So you're a one man shop, if you will. And how this is treated is by default is as a sole proprietorship. So it's exactly the same 
as this entity type to sole proprietorship. So you are simply adding Schedule C to your individual tax return. A single member LLC by default is taxed the exact same way a sole proprietorship. All it does is give you that limited liability protection. Um, let's move on. Oh, briefly, let's touch on the P LLC. So a lot of you are probably like, what is this P LLC? I never heard of it. P LLC stands for Professional Limited Liability Company. So who should be forming a P LLC? Someone who holds a license with the state that they're forming the entity in. Uh, most of your states across the nation support a P LLC. So if you are a certified public accountant or an attorney or a physician or a realtor, um, or maybe a general contractor who holds a license, you should be forming a professional limited liability company if it's available in your state. Um, all right, moving on, MMLLC, that stands for multi-member LLC. The owners of an LLC are called members. Um, now, the default tax classification for a multi-member LLC is a partnership, and so, you would file a separate set of tax documents called its form 1065 and that's the tax return a partnership completes or your accountant would complete for you. Um, there's no sort of, uh, I, I mentioned this a moment ago, there's no check the box when you're forming your multi-member LLC for you to know that, hey, it's gonna get treated this way from a tax perspective. This is just information that your accountant should be advising you on. Um, and let's touch on the C corporation. A lot of you might have heard this. This is your, you know, Amazons of the world or C corporations. But if you are a professional, just like I mentioned here, the PLLC, if you're a professional and forming a C corporation, your corporation is actually called a professional association. So again, your attorney, your realtor. Um, let me touch on the realtors for a second. Many realtors have some, you know, top producers in their office who have PAs, but um, you know, the, the, the corporations have been around in existence much longer than the LLCs have, and that's why they may be doing so. It may not be right for you. Um, you might prematurely create a um, PA if, you're, if you don't have a conversation with your attorney or CPA. So how is the corporation treated for tax purposes? Well, it's subject to double taxation, which means that the profits from the corporation are going to pay tax when they form file, uh, file form 1120. And then the shareholders, the owners of a C corporation are, car, are called shareholders, and they will then again pay tax when they receive distributions from the C corporation or um, the professional association. So how can these um, entities be treated as a S corporation? So quick point I wanna make is, you can't go to your state and say, I wanna form an S corporation. These are the entity types that you would form with your state from the single member LLC uh, uh, on this way. I mentioned that there's no documents with the state that you would file for the sole proprietorship. Um, and so why would you even want uh, to form an S Corp? Well, I have a whole nother video that I'll make on that topic. But in short, if the profits of your business, so you have your revenue or your sales minus your expenses, if that number is greater than about 40,000 or so, Forming a S corporation or electing to be treated as an S corporation can save you thousands of dollars in self-employment taxes. Um, not hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. It's a very powerful thing. And so again, once you cross that $40,000 threshold, you may wanna have your entity, instead of receiving its default tax treatment, be treated as an S corporation. So a single member LLC can be treated as an S corporation. A multi-member LLC can also be treated this way, and your C corporation or professional association um, can be treated this way. It's very rare that, you know, if you kind of jump the gun and you're not sure what you're doing and you form this type of entity, you would, pro you would likely never have it treated the default way. You would have to treat it um, as an S corporation so it's not subject to double taxation. But if you're new in business and you do that prematurely, you might have additional fees um, so that your accountant might charge you an additional fee to prepare that tax return. Um, there is also payroll that you must institute because you must pay yourself a quote unquote reasonable salar salary uh, when you have an S corporation. So, you know, you need to consult with your tax or legal professional and, you know, try not to prematurely do this. Um, 
this is not a recommendation that I'm making, but a lot of entrepreneurs will, especially if they're a one-man shop, form a single member LLC or PLLC and um, be treated as a sole proprietorship. And then once they cross that $40,000 in profit threshold where they can save thousands of dollars in self-employment tax, that's when they'll make this S-Corp election and have their LLC treated as an S-Corporation for tax purposes. Now, I wanna to touch on something that's very important that a lot of new entrepreneurs um, don't understand. When are these different tax documents due? The sole proprietorship is due at the same time you're forming your, sorry, filing your individual tax return. So typically that's April 15th. Um, and you can form an ex file an extension to have that due, you know, six months later. Um, and that's so due April 15th. All of these other entities, so if your business is taxed as an S corporation or a partnership or a C corporation, those tax returns must be filed by March 15th, a month earlier. Um, the penalty for not doing that is pretty hefty. The IRS will charge you uh, approximately $200 per month per owner that you don't file these uh, tax returns on time. So let's use the example of a multi-member LLC. So by default, it's treated as a partnership. Well, if you don't file that on time, um, you'll have two people, so that's $400 per month um, that you're late in filing that return. Um, so that covers the major topics I wanted to touch on on this video. How are these treated from a legal perspective and these different legal entities and what is the tax perspective? There is a ton of misinformation out there from you know YouTubers and bloggers and I wanted to clear up all those misconceptions that are out there. You know the, the goal was to sort of create that definitive guide for the entrepreneur to use on you know what they should form when, when creating their business. But I would urge you to contact either uh, an attorney or a CPA or both to make sure that they are in agreement with what you're about to do because you could cost yourself um, potentially thousands of dollars um, after the fact, after you formed your LLC and it might be too late. Um, if you have a comment, please, or a question, please leave it in the comment section below. Uh, perhaps I'll create another video um, answering your question. Um, thanks so much for listening and I'll see you in the next video.